Hello and uh, welcome to uh, this latest Flames of War video. This is, as you probably know from the title, um, our look at Market Garden, which is Luke's book for Flames of War. So we're just going to take a brief look, kind of, at this book and uh, sort of tell you what it's all about, tell you what we find interesting and perhaps what you might see coming down the pipeline in the dim, grim darkness of the far future. So, Market Garden. Right, Market Garden is a intelligence briefing book with 23 lists. Lots of uh, potential history and gaming there. Lots of variety of lists. Yes, as well. yes. So, it costs right now, as this video is uploaded probably, £18 in the uh, actual online store on the Battlefront website. Which I personally think is fantastic value for money because if you talk about other games, 40k maybe for instance, well, you, pay, you probably the, end up paying about £35 for a book. Yeah, but this is, for the amount, for the thickness of it, for the amount of detail it's got in it, for what it's, for the content, it's £18, pretty, pretty down, very good value. Good. So, um, Let's uh, jump right in. So this book, Market Gun, covers the Allied armies fighting in Holland from September to November 1944. So its sister book is the book Bridge by Bridge, which covers the uh, German forces from the same period. So, yeah. so, so in the book you've got how to use it, basic use guides, yeah, and um, you also have a lot of history at the beginning. So you have general history of the campaign, Market Garden, you know, the, I'm assuming you know, the, um, the ground-based attack and the airborne operation to capture the bridges. Um, I might also add, if you don't know about that, a very extremely basic way of understanding might be to watch the film A Bridge Too Far, which I'm certain the uh, cover art is a direct take from a scene from that film. Um, yes. okay. It covers the basics of army, simple army building. Um, I'm going to say you've got your painting guides, history for uh, your painting guides. You've got oh, they're all in the back. They're very yeah, detailed, very, very good, very nice. Um, it says about the armies involved. You've got numbers, um, the numbers of troops yeah, deployed, here, things like that. So um, you know, nice basic history. Probably you know, if you really want to know about it, you probably have to read a proper a book really. But you know, this is. This is nice, it really tells you what, what you've got in front of you and why it's in the book. So we'll just quickly we'll, um, flick through and tell you what uh, we've got to show you. So, first section of the book, um, this uh, lovely uh, red section starting here, is the Commonwealth Airborne Forces. So we have um, you know, a few warriors, we have Major Roy Urquhart, John Frost, and... Uh, Stanislaw Sosobowski, and this is part of the Airborne, so you have a few lists here that revolve around um, British parachute companies, um, the Polish parachute company, Polish yeah. Parachute company. Um, yeah, so you've got a lot of nice Airborne lists, I mean these lists in different forms are also in other books like Overlord, um, which generally has these lists earlier on, apart from the Polish one. So yeah, you've got air landing, rules for these guys, lots of history sprinkled out throughout, um, airborne reconnaissance squadron, a list entirely made up of jeeps, um, you know, so a lot of these nice, interesting airborne lists, uh, you know, a lot of flavour there if you're trying to build a historical force. It also provides you with quite a nice example of, I don't know how clear that would be on the camera, sort of scenarios you can play out, the terrain available and what you can really do. Yes, just give you an idea of what the army may look like on the actual tabletop. Um, after we go through the Commonwealth Airborne Forces we get to the American Airborne Forces. This seems to mainly focus in terms of history on the 82nd, but there are also options for playing the 101st Airborne uh, for all you Band of Brothers fans. Although, sadly, the warriors of um, Richard Winters are omitted from uh, this particular book. So, we've got... Yeah, the warriors in here are Major Julian Cook, General James... Brigadier, Brigadier General. Brigadier General. James Gavin. James Gavin, and I think that's... 
Oh no, you've got Major General Maxwell Taylor as well. So um, yeah, and there are a couple of lists. What they've seemed to done in, done in this book is in, um, uh, for me, Atlantic War is the best example. You would have multiple divisions uh, represented in one list with options limited to those specific divisions. In, in this book, what they've done is they've literally split the divisions into two separate but very similar lists. So on this page you have 82nd, and on this page you have 101st, although they share a lot of similar options. So um, Yeah, I mean, as you can see here, almost all of it is actually the same between uh, the 82nd and the 101st. I mean, there's yeah. some minor yeah, changes, there's minor differences. Very I'm similar. I'm sure they have slightly different rules as well. So we move on through the American section. Skip over the Americans. Uh, oh, we have American. We have American glider infantry as well. Um, and then we get into the real meat. We the get books. into Operation Garden. So now we have Thirtieth Corps and the ground component of the operation. So you get Thirtieth Corps and the Irish Guards. So we get Michael Caine. Sorry, I mean uh, Joe Vandeleur. Um, and uh, the, um, all of those nice lovely armoured things. And tank companies. Tank companies. Yeah. Not many, many options for... And, and again, I think the interesting thing about this, this book is it offers you a lot of options to build what I would say is a historically focused force. You can really build a force with the warrior, you can build a force you know, with all the right support that it would have in the actual battle. Unlike, I think, some of the other books where there's a lot more generic lists, or there are more generic lists available. The lists in this one do feel very different. They feel, they feel very other. historically minded, I would I mean, think. Elements appear in each other's lists, but generally the, you know, the motor company is very different from the armoured wrecking. Yeah, um, they're, they're, all, they're, very, they're much more... I, might, I, I, my perspective, I'd say... You might see one or two units yeah. blend, but if you want They're a bit more solid, discreet than some of the other ones. So. They're definitely a solid basic yeah. anyway. on each list. Oh, and, and for um, the, those um, armoured lists, you either have Guards Armoured Division or the 11th Armoured Division. And the Guards have Guards Rules, obviously. So, uh, yeah, so they're actually the same motivation and skill between the two. Yes, indeed. So and uh, also we get the lawyer, the lawyer regiment as well. One of your favourites. I don't think it's my favourite. I just yeah. like the idea that you've got the Inns of Court Yeomanry. Um, so after we have the Operation Garden section, we have the First Canadian Army, um, and this opens with Canadian armoured divisions. Uh, I think the main difference is the lack of Cromwells, um, and of course the Canadian Special Rules, which are included in the book. Um, yeah, so Canadian Armoured Division, yeah. uh, Canadian Armoured Recce, um, so you know, a lot of scope for different nationalities, although mainly I would say this book is um, a Commonwealth book, Definitely. because the only American forces you really get are the 82nd and the 101. Um, there's no real American. There's no American armour really. Um, <laughs> or just infantry lists. They're oh, they've, got, they've, they've, got the, they've got the glider rifle, but the glider rifle is still a more specialised infantry company. Uh, the Canadian Rifle Company, which is also can be the 52nd Lowland Division. Yep, the Scots. And there, uh, so they just uh, one less. Yeah. And then uh, skill. you round off the book, finally, with the commando section. You have one list in the book. Um, oh, sorry, the or otherwise, but yes, the commandos who have their own special rules and have a hyper expensive infantry unit, which is the commando company, which is 390 points for how many stands? I, I can't remember. Not very many. Oh, it's yeah, 390 points for seven stands of um, High commando elite infantry. Infantry. Yes. Oh no, not not seven. Sorry, double that. Fourteen stands. Well, that's not as bad then, but they're still that's pr pretty elite for the points. I like I like that. Yeah. Anyway, so um, and then finally, you know, you've got the support. arsenal and divisional support for the Canadians. And you can have all of your heavy weapons, big guns, your oh, and Hobart's funny. Hobart's, Hobart's funny do actually take book. 
and that's something I will be taking into my list later on. Mm -hmm. I bought myself a couple of might have Sherman a, crabs uh, and I think it's some AVREs. Might have um, a beach landing in the works at some point, maybe. Uh, we can certainly use maybe your I have a copy of Overlord. So I'll use your Overlord for that, some D Day related you things. Might have a go on that. But you can get well, a crocodile. I mean, how cool is that? That is very cool. That's a very cool tank. And it appears. It's quite an expensive unit, mm -hmm. but, but could it's be very useful. It's one of those things where how competitive it is, mm. but it's certainly be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I mean, you could play some very nice fluffy missions with this. You could probably have a mission of parachutists coming in. I know you can do that. Definitely watch the battle report where gliders came in. So you could probably do that at some point as well, which would be really interesting. I mean, I should probably get bridge, bridge by bridge. I mean, but anyway, what, Luke? is the two lists out of this I, that you find. The two standout lists for me in particular in this book are the motor company, so they say mechanised company, and you can either take this guards, armoured or 11th armoured. You take your guards, you pay a little bit more, but you do get the guards bonuses. Yep, which is, I believe, you re-roll motivation. I wouldn't know where that was quickly. Oh no, it's fine. Um, yeah, I think it's re-rolls motivation. Um, I'm fairly sure it's probably back here, but anyway. Along those lines as well. Uh, Just a quick flip through. No? Good, good, yes, no. 11th Army Division Special Rules. Guard Special Rules, no. Where is the guard? There we go! Unflappable. Uh, guards may reroll platoon commands, uh, platoon morale checks. And they have a few rules for duck bills and platoon debuffs. So you know you get, you just get some extra extra bonus. I mean, rules. it's ten points more. So it's not a great deal more. Would you play them as guards? Now? I think I'd take, I I think I would take them as guards for the ability to reroll re platoon. platoon morale checks because they are only confident. No, they're veteran. Oh no, they are veteran. Well, oh no, sorry, they are confident. Confidence is good. Confidence is good, but you get you you're sort of going up in between, aren't you? Confident yeah. and uh, fearless, aren't you? So what, what's the other one? It's not too bad. Uh, I mean, certainly, another thing on the motor company is how oh. mobile it is, and um, you can take a lot of the extra things I like to add to my lists as support. You've got your Sherman, so you've got your Fireflies, mm -hmm. but you've got some very mobile, very Nasty. Like all of your support infantry. is mechanised. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're not know, machine gun and anti tank support, mm -hmm. and the options for obviously taking artillery and aerial. Support. Is and a, the other list. It, it seems sort of like a lot like a a British uh, Gipanzer to Panzergrenadier list, or so which is the armoured armoured Panzergrenadiers. Yeah, and that's um, um, just for reference. If any of you do know these books, that's page 118, and. On page 164 is the other one, and this is the list I will be building for you guys to see later on. It's the Canadian, well, it's a rifle company, but I should be using it as Canadian. That uh, gives my, me my confident veteran, among other special roles. Mm -hmm. I would take, but well, I like this just because you've got, you have got quite a wide variety of armour you can bring, and quite a good solid infantry backbone, but there's really is a lot of scope for expansion and changing yeah. this list. It's, it's a really flexible list actually. You've got a lot of lot of unit choices. I mean you, you can take Hobart's Funnies on this list as well, um, which is the Breaching Group and Crocodile Platoon. Um, so that's, you know, you've got a lot to think about here, I think. It's, the only sad thing about it is it would be interesting if you could take tanks other than Cromwell's, as as like a main battle tank, I think. You, yeah, you've got you've got your Cromwell and you've got your Sherman, and that's. No, oh, but you're Canadian though, so I think you don't get the Cromwell, if I'm not mistaken. So if you go to page one four nine and um, another point one one four nine, no Cromwell's. No. Nope. And then one five nine. One five nine. Um. Okay. Where is it? The. the... Canadian armoured recce. Yeah. They got the page wrong. I think they got the page wrong. They got but... the page wrong. Um, Never mind. Here it is. There you go. It's one five four, not one five nine. No Cromwells. No Cromwells. And... So you don't get Cromwells, which is 
you know, I guess that makes it a lot easier to make in terms of buying models because all you have to do is buy the new plastic Sherman. But they do have the Hobart's Vikings, which are a resin kit. Now, I'm going to get on to the Sherman crabs in a different video because I've got one or two things to yeah, say about sure. those. Um, but the American M10. Oh, the, uh, the Achilles. This is the Achilles. So it's got, instead of the 3 inch gun, it's got a 17 pounder. Right. So it's a Firefly. It's basically. Firefly. Almost a Firefly. And it's cheaper. I believe so. It's cheaper. So. But that's a nice option. And I wouldn't necessarily go for armies that were alright, point twice. They do look really cool. Yeah. I, I love the look of them. I'm playing games using them, and it's all great fun. Mm. I'm, I must admit, I'm more fan of a type of tank, but... Uh, uh, right, so your two lists. Okay, so my two lists that I found interesting, or I'd like to point out, is... Um, where are we? Some, I'm just saying six. So firstly, it is the commando list. Now, the commando list, I think, is really cool and crazy, which is why I, I think I'd be interested in... I'm interested in it, because you have very few options. Like, all you, you, your main component is just commando companies, which is that 390 point um, thing, that leviathan of an infantry choice. I, I doubt I'd take double component, com, uh, I doubt I'd take double sections. I'd probably take single sections, which is 195 points for the seven stands. But the interesting thing about them is you can replace um, stands in them with Piats, SMGs, and light mortars. So you can customize them into um, your support, yes. which, is, which is nice. Because because your only uh, real support is basically Hobart's funnies. You've got your breaching groups, breaching which group. are Sherman crabs, and Sherman if you want AVREs. AVREs, and then you've got artillery. Yeah, you've got and naval support. gunfire if you want. And naval gunfire, but um, it's not. You haven't got a great deal. Of, you haven't got no. your armor, really, but, realistically, because of the on these things. There is something about having like hundreds of commandos, you know. I think if you were to play it right, it'd be very hard to this. It could be very good. I think, in reality, it's not a competitive list. I, th I think, really, it's. I'm going to have a bit of fun and play, play it historical. But I don't really know. You could uh, set yourself up some quite elite missions, yeah, you, stories, you missions, and have quite a lot of fun with that. Yes. So the other list that I like the look of is, and this is mainly from a historical point, is the Polish Parachute Company. Um, so the Polish Parachute Company, it differs from the um, normal British one in that it gets to take more um, 30th Corps armour. So it gets better support options. So it's, it's Polish, so it gets Polish special rules, and it can take you know, Shermans and Fireflies and Artillery, all from lists in the 30th course section we discussed earlier. And, you know, I think it's it's a pretty well-rounded list. I think you could play that reasonably, you know, uh, competitively. And I like it because, you know, I find, I find the Polish units in World War II very interesting because, you know, these guys are kind of like exiles and... I think that's so cool, and it'd be a very interesting list to play from a historical standpoint. For me... Um, so if you look at the Polish parachute, quest, the British parachute, British parachute, from the 30th, yeah. you've got a unit, which is yeah, a, yeah, air, air support. support. Half of the Polish parachute company... In terms of support, that is. Well, yeah, the support platoons, all the support platoons... Pretty much. Are from, from 30th. Support. So I think that would enable you to build a pretty strong you know, infantry company with elite infantry but with a strong armoured component. There's certainly an armoured backbone of, as most allied lists are going to be, they've got backbone yeah, well, you know, Shermans. You, yeah, you can take Shermans. Or actually, I think you might be able to take Cromwells in this one. Let, let's have a quick look. Um, you know, I think... Certainly, you, you, you've, you've got your meeting bed as far as it comes with your tanks. You've definitely got what a lot of us. No, you can't take. Um, you can't quite take them, but uh, yeah, no, that that definitely be. You've got some reasonable support with your Germans as well, mm. which means you've got your fireflies. Yeah, be a nice thing. Fireflies, so good. I hate them, um, but uh, yeah. 
So, I think that's pretty much it for our look. Uh, yeah. It was a very nice book, and um, would you definitely recommend worth, it? I would recommend it to anybody. But, but the question is, is would, you, would you recommend it for a first book? Because I, w I think I would instead recommend something like Overlord. For me, I would recommend Overlord over this. And the simple thing is, because I feel like a lot of these lists are less generic, more specialized. Spore specialized. You've got and to buy you know, lots of different things. Yeah, to not, never, not necessarily that. Lists. It's just that a lot of the lists are specialist lists. And in Overlord, I think you get a better, a better generic sort of library that you can pick up and say, you know, I'm going to play with Rifleman today. I'm going to play Armored tomorrow. Oh. But I can still go and play those. I can still have Hobart's Funnies. I can still certainly me having picked up, picked up Open Fire, and this being the first book I've got. I feel to fulfil my Canadian rifle company, I've got an awful lot of work to do, money to spend, to get it out to a point where I can actually use that list. I think you know you might have that anyway. I mean, certainly at least you don't have to buy Cromwells. No, I can stick to my Cromwells shirt. are beautiful. I love them, but um, you know. What's and all you might say. But yeah. Right, so I think this is it for this video on um, Operation Market Garden. Expect to see more Flames of War reviews, unboxings, everything else in the future. And um, I hope to see you in the next video. I'll see you in the next one.